Keanu Reeves might be well known as the butt-kicking hero defender of dogs everywhere, the action star John Wick, but he's also almost as well known for being the internet's boyfriend. No, I'm not just saying that because this man has always been a handsome dreamboat, even now well into his 50s. What I'm talking about is how a whole number of online fans get all hot and bothered whenever it comes to Keanu and his dedication to generosity. Something he takes so seriously, it even impacted where he lived through his life as a young adult. Keanu has spent the better part of his career keeping his private life close to his chest and for good reason too. Not only did he experience the total and complete utter heartbreak that comes along with losing an unborn child and his longtime partner in the span of just one year, but long before that he was having to support his sister Kim through a cancer diagnosis. And believe me when I say this, Keanu went above and beyond his brotherly duty to make sure his sister didn't lose her fight. Back in 1991, when Keanu was still just getting his feet wet as a young actor in movies like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Point Break, his sister was hit with the devastating news that she was suffering from leukemia. To help her fight back, Keanu immediately sold the home he had been living in to pay for her treatment. And he didn't stop there. After spending around $5 million footing his sister's bills, a few years later, Keanu would donate 70% of his salary from the first Matrix film to further leukemia research for every everyone on the planet. After all, this disease is responsible for over 20,000 deaths each year in the US alone. Thankfully, all of this sacrifice paid off in the long run. Kim not only beat leukemia with her brother's help, she's been cancer free ever since. Considering the result, I have no doubt that Keanu believes he made the right decision. Nonetheless, it did leave him at something of a disadvantage without a home to call his own. For the next 10 years of his life, Keanu Reeves lived like a nomad, traveling from one hotel or rental unit to the next. Then one day he finally decided it was time to settle down again. He told to a crowd gathered at the San Remo Music Festival, there were many years where I led a bit of a gypsy life. I worked and then came back to Los Angeles. I rented houses. After a while, I felt like I wanted to have a home. Having been without a place of his own for so long in the early 2000s, Keanu finally got serious about buying a home again. In 2003, at the age of 39, Keanu Reeves discovered his longtime residence and knew almost immediately that it would be the perfect spot for him to live. He described this moment to the San Remo Music Festival before a performance, telling them, I had a wonderful experience. When you walk into a place and you go, oh, this is it, this is it. So I was able to live in that place, the home where I live now. It gives you something you know. It's a safe place, a place to rest, a place to think, to entertain. It's great to have it. Purchased for $4.85 million, this 5,607 square foot home was built in 1988 and has just two bedrooms as well as three bathrooms along with a three-car garage. Situated in a neighborhood of the Hollywood Hills known as the Bird Streets, Keanu shares this community with other big-time actors such as Jennifer Aniston as well as Leonardo DiCaprio. Nonetheless, Keanu has made the decision to not share a single bit of info about the interior of his home with the rest of us. All we really know for sure is what's included on the outside. Amenities like a full service outdoor barbecue area, not to mention a lush courtyard, a long infinity pool, and a charming all glass facade from which Keanu no doubt enjoys the home's numerous beautiful views of West Hollywood. Outside of this main address, you're bound to find stuff all over the net regarding Keanu's potential real estate in Honolulu, Hawaii, as well as Malibu Beach. But the truth of the matter is that there's no actual proof in regards to either of those holdings anywhere. For the most part, it appears to be sheer speculation driven by people who don't know him. While Keanu has never outwardly spoken about living anywhere other than Los Angeles, he has occasionally complained about all the attention living in Hollywood can get you, specifically when it comes to tourists visiting the city. He once told the Daily Telegraph, I'll come out in the morning and get my newspaper and star spotters are there. You feel like an animal in the cage. The only thing that makes it worse is when those same people sometimes break into the cage, as Keanu has had happen many times. Since buying his home two decades ago, Keanu has had to make peace with having his home broken into time and time again by some obsessed fans. In fact, just a few months ago, a man named Brian Keith Dixon broke into Keanu's property, trespassed all over the premises, and then left behind a backpack containing a DNA 
testing kit in a desperate attempt to prove that he and Keanu are biologically related. Dixon, who sometimes goes by the alias of Jasper Keith Reeves, has trespassed six times on Keanu's property since November of last year. Security footage has caught him peering over the walls, smoking in the garden, and even walking along an outdoor terrace. This extreme behavior has now forced Keanu to file a temporary restraining order against the man, barring him from coming with 100 yards of the actor. And while he might be a seasoned martial artist thanks to his training for The Matrix, Keanu has still had to hire a security team to enforce order and protect his home from intruders. But maybe Keanu should have hired his team a while ago because Keith is far from the first person to ever break into the action star's home. Way back in 2014, Keanu Reeves walked into his house's library only to discover a woman in her 40s had broken in and was sitting calmly in his study waiting to meet him. So Keanu, equally as calmly, reached for his phone and dialed 911 to request some assistance. Less than a week later, another woman would break into Keanu's home, take a dip in his swimming pool, shower in his bathroom, and then stand over top of his bed while watching Keanu sleep. Oh, did I mention she was naked while doing all of this? The woman was then allegedly placed in a psychiatric facility following her removal from the premises. Keanu would later tell Extra about that event. It was a woman who was a fan who wanted to say hi at 4 in the morning with her luggage. Last but certainly not least, a year later, an obsessed male fan turned up at Keanu's address and left a suspicious FedEx envelope in his mail. As a reference to the first Matrix film, the package contained a phone with a note that read, I will call the cell provided tomorrow. We need to meet as I have already started building the new world. Hashtag master builder. I mean, you gotta give the guy credit for throwing a hashtag in there even though that's something that never would have appeared in the first Matrix film in 1999. I don't know what the rest of you think, but considering the difficulties Keanu Reeves has had maintaining his privacy while living out of his longtime home, he might want to consider trading in or trading up when it comes to where he lit. I mean, just a few days ago, someone pulled a prank on him by having the police show up at his house for a wellness check. All right, everyone, that's going to bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for joining me today. And before you head off, consider answering the following question. How many break-ins would you have to experience before deciding it was time to move? Let me know if you're as brave as Keanu Reeves in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a new tour. My name's Kara, and if you'd like to keep exploring the homes of other celebrities, then stay tuned because next we're diving into the homes of George Clooney. Bye. A-list actor, director, screenwriter, and more, George Clooney seemingly does it all. And like many other successful celebrities, he's also made sure to invest a good amount of his earnings from his long-running career into his stunning real estate portfolio. George and his wife Amal are also generous with their philanthropy, such as when they made a generous donation to help a flooded French town near one of their homes. George's property in France is only one of his homes, and the star owns places across the globe. There's his main house in Studio City, Los Angeles, which was his first big purchase back in 1995, and he still calls home to this day, as well as the gorgeous Villa Oleandra, his estate over on Lake Como in Italy, which boasts a reported 25 rooms, an outdoor theater, swimming pool, and much more. Back in the mid-90s, George's popularity, thanks to his role on ER, was blowing up. During the same time, he bought a $2.2 million villa in Studio City from rock legend Stevie Nicks. When he purchased the home, it clocked in at around 7,000 square feet of space and featured six bedrooms. But ever since then, George has sunk millions more into expanding the property considerably, including the construction of a cable railroad, an outdoor pizza oven, and a brand new building dubbed the Playhouse. In terms of the interior, George would invite CBS cameras into his home back in 2012 to show the space off. That's when we discovered that most of his mansion is covered in hardwood floors, covered ceilings, and includes a couple gorgeous stone fireplaces. There's also a massive dining room that features an entire wall that's solely there to showcase George's unbelievable wine collection. But most important to George was the fact that this was a house that he could turn into a home. After marrying Amal Clooney in 2014, she'd move in and quickly turn this bachelor pad into what she told Vogue is now more of a 
a low-key house than an entertaining space, especially since the couple welcomed their beautiful twin daughters in 2017. Further amenities include a full-service bar with some classic Hollywood photos and an outdoor pool as well as a home theater with a 3D projection system. In fact, George formerly had several bars in this LA home, but that might have changed once he and his wife decided to turn the place into more of a family home. This main full service bar, which he once showed off, boasts an original Rat Pack photo of the first Ocean's Eleven film on the wall. And when George made the remake, the actors, including Brad Pitt and Matt Damon, had their photo taken in the same pose, which is also on the wall. These days, George's Studio City Mansion is much more open and airy with the perfect indoor-outdoor flow. Many of the common rooms open out to the gardens and the pool, and while it's more of a family space according to a mall, it still has the capacity to entertain any of the couple's famous friends very easily. Despite living here for almost 30 years now, George has never considered leaving, and why would he? He's got more than enough money to hold onto this main house along with half a dozen others. Years before George would meet a mall and marry her in a beautiful ceremony in Venice, Italy, he already had strong ties to the country thanks to the millions that he'd invested into Villa Oleandra, a jaw-dropping 18th century Lake Como vacation home he bought from the Heinz family for $7 million. Located just steps from the water, this mammoth property boasts more than 25 rooms and amenities that include multiple tennis courts, an outdoor pool, and a massive garage where George can store his collection of vintage motorcycles that almost killed him a few years ago. Over the years, countless A-listers have stopped by to spend the night here, including Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, as well as Jennifer Aniston and even Matt Damon. Inside, some of the many lavish features include ornately carved ceiling, huge bathrooms to pamper yourself, and even a separate pizza room. The place is so nice that parts of George's massive hit film, Ocean's 12, were actually filmed on the estate. The luxury property also boasts a full size gym, landscaped gardens, and a strong wall to keep the mansion protected from any water from the lake. Lake Como is known for other wealthy and famous individuals too, and one of George's neighbors is actually celebrity fashion designer Donatella Frazzacci, for example. George once said that this villa changed my life in a very pleasant and unexpected way. I realized how beautiful life was in Italy and how it really helped calm me and not feel so pressured. So it's clearly near and dear to his heart. Not long after picking up his first villa, George would also buy the villa next door. But the coolest thing of all, back in 2019, George and Amal teamed up with the fundraising platform Omaze to invite one lucky donor to have lunch with them at their villa. I mean, I can't even imagine what it was like for the winner, Deborah, to get invited into George's home and enjoy a five-star Italian meal. The wine selection alone must have been out of this world. 2014 was a pretty big year for George. After all, it was the year he finally gave up his bachelorhood for good. But here's what else happened that year. The newlywed couple spent their honeymoon camping out in the unfurnished rooms of their brand new property situated on the English island of Sonning Eye on the Thames. Reports suggest that the couple paid around $13 million for this stunning home that boasts an entry hall with towering ceilings as well as crisp but Georgian moldings throughout. According to Vogue magazine, the home also includes a sitting room that's full of family photos as well as a pool house and a 16 seat screening room. During a Vogue cover shoot, Amal would also show off the home's glass covered garden room with some gorgeous looking citrus trees. Amal would also go on to explain that the couple's glass fronted pool house doubles as a quote unquote party zone and a workspace for George and Amal who have offices located upstairs. Then again, not everyone is exactly ecstatic that Hollywood's golden couple has moved in next door and a bunch of George's English neighbors, well, they're feeling a little sour about it. All of these properties are gorgeous, but you know George also needs a place to stay back home on the East Coast. In late 2016, he and Amal picked themselves up a nearly $15 million full floor unit in a high rise building in Midtown Manhattan. Originally designed by architects Foster and Partners, this building includes 94 units 
units, each of which features walls of windows, high ceilings, and polished concrete floors. Extra amenities are said to include a lap pool, library, gym, and even its own culinary market with a ground floor restaurant overseen by the highest rated Michelin rate chef ever, Joel Robichon. Of course, since this is their private home and the couple spent a lot of time here whenever a mall needs to work at Columbia Law School, where she occasionally teaches, the details about the interior have actually been kept hush hush. Finally, what seems to be George's most recent real estate addition happened in 2021, and he kicked off the year with the purchase of an $8.3 million Provence wine estate in Rignoles, France, known as Domaine du Canada. This 18th century estate is located about a dozen miles from Chateau Miraval, the vast parcel of land owned by George's good friend, Brad Pitt. Spanning a sprawling 425 acres, George is now the proud owner of gardens, a lake, an olive grove, a 72-foot shaded pool, tennis court, and 25 acres of pristine vineyard. As for the total number of bedrooms and bathrooms in the main house, well, that info isn't readily available from the public listings. But given that it clocks in at around 10,000 square feet of space across three floors, I think that it's pretty safe to guess that the answer is a lot. Of course, as excited as George and Amal no doubt were to try out their new place, nobody was more excited for their big move than the town mayor, who took to Twitter to officially announce that Clooney is arriving. Well, everyone, after checking out George Clooney's many amazing global mansions, that's going to conclude today's house tour. But before we leave, answer me this. If you had to choose a European retreat, either in Italy or France, which would be your pick? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. I'm Kira the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat.